Well, it is very important to keep your friends updated on all the queer stuff going on in your life. Because chances are your friends are queer too. And that means they're interested in all the queer stuff going on in your life. So you better be keeping them updated, you know? Hello baby queers and welcome back to my channel. It is time for another installment of Queer Tech Talks. Because you love the Queer Tech Talks and I love the Queer Tech Talks. So we need to do it more often. But you know the drill. Before we continue with the Tech Talks, you better get hydrated. Grab some water or some tea or whatever else you like to drink. And no, iced coffee does not technically count as hydration. But since you're gay, I will let it pass. But still, maybe, maybe consider drinking water as well, you know? But anyways, are you all hydrated? Good. Let's continue with the TikToks. I'm, um, I'm going home to see my family for the holidays. Ah, oh, lovely. Oh, is that a good thing? I actually, I'm going to a wedding in a few weeks. <gasps> How exciting. Cool. Yeah, it's a gay wedding. That is fine. That is, that is so fine. Fuck yes. I got this new water bottle and look, it's green. It's, it's nice. Holy fucking shit, it's green. That's the best fucking color. I am wearing the right hoodie for this video right now, but green is literally the best fucking color. But yeah, conversations just hit a little bit different because if you're aware of it, you know what to expect, right? But I always think it's so awkward when straight people are like, Oh no, I'm, I'm totally fine with queer people. Like, it's okay that it's a gay wedding. Because either they're just so panicked that they're literally just, they're really just chill with it. But they're so panicked that someone will think they're not, that they overreact like that. Or it's one of those, I'm f fine with gay people, I just don't want to see it type situation. So I'm always skeptical when people react like that, but yeah, yeah. If someone tells you they're going home to see their family for the holidays or whatever, my first question is always going to be like, oh, right. Um, is that good? Like, do you need... Do you need anything to be prepared for that, or is it like fine, you know? <laughs> I met a girl a little over a week ago, and now I am sitting in her apartment without her. And I wrote her a poem. I'm a fucking faggot. I think you already knew that, though. I think you already knew that you're gay as fuck. But you did just prove it. You did just prove it. So well. So well. Writing poetry about a woman you just met. And just being... Like, honestly, straight relationships just move so differently. Because... Straight people might hook up quickly. But, like, this kind of, like, getting emotionally close that queer people do usually with trauma bonding let's be honest but then just like chilling in someone's apartment that you literally just met like a week ago that is so gay of you it's so gay and i'm here for it <laughs> beer and wine drinker but once i start it's hard for me to stop sometimes you're an alcoholic is that what it is yeah that's what it is that's what oh <laughs> wow i didn't I love my friends deeply, but I have no idea what a crush feels like, and dating sounds like being friends with extra steps. Is perhaps something that is gonna call out anyone who doesn't know the aromatic yet? Because, yeah, most, most people aren't gonna be this confused by it. You know? Repeat after me. Okay. Crispy, juicy, tender. I just put my newborn son into a blender. Well. To be fair, you have to live your life and not your mother. So, 
she can't really tell you what to do. Um, because I know a lot of parents, or like actually all parents probably, have like expectations for their kids, obviously. And that in and of itself is fine, but then kind of trying to push it on them is where it gets weird. But literally, most parents are probably going to think their child is going to grow up like neurotypical and cishet and just like go the normal expected route of just like growing up and starting your own family. But guess what? If you just want to be queer and smooch your friends, because why not? That's cool. And also, <laughs> I don't, I don't think your parents considered the autism. But to be fair, that's one of the things you really just have to roll with. Like, like honestly, I mean, saying queer as a face is just as dumb as saying, "Oh, you'll grow out of your autism," or you're just being oversensitive. But still, you just gotta roll with it, you know. <laughs> You know that being gay is a mental illness, right? Okay. What do you mean, okay? I just said it was a mental illness. Yeah, I mean, honestly, at this point, what's one more? Fair. Fair. Like, a lot of queer people... <laughs> Actually, I think a lot of straight people, if they were to go to therapy, um and confront things instead of just being like, oh, you know, no, it's fine. I'll just push through. Like, it's fine. I just need to try harder. Would probably be diagnosed with things as well. It's just that when things go a little bit more off plan, because let's face it, a lot of queer people are just bullied so much more than straight people are. Obviously, straight people get bullied too. Not saying that, but still. Like, if you're queer, way more likely. So if you then end up going to therapy because there's no way you can't admit that you're depressed or have anxiety or something, it might become more obvious that you have other mental illnesses that probably fly a little bit under the radar in someone else. And if they don't think about it, and if they always just like pretend like nothing's wrong and do everything in their power to never think about their mental health, then they're not gonna know they have a mental illness, even though they still do. <laughs> so honestly, even if we do consider queerness a mental illness, which is just dumb and so not true, but arguing with these people is also pointless, so just add it to the list. Check it off and move on. It's gonna be a more productive use of your time, actually, than arguing with these dipshits. Yesterday I gave you all my updated terms for men who love men. What are my updated terms for bisexuals? I feel a little more qualified to answer this one, as I am a bisexual. Let's get started. Coming in at the top, bizasters. And no, it's not bisasters, it's bizasters, because that's how much of a disaster we are. Bisexuals play for both teams. In some scenarios, one might call that a traitor, which is why my second idea is Benedict Arnold's. <laughs> I'm dead. I'm Benedict Arnold. Kinsey Scalers. Self-explanatory. This is similar to a man's man for men who like men. A man of the people, or a woman of the people, or a them of the people. But then I was like, or should we just sum it up with an enemy of the people? Because what do bisexuals bring to the table usually? It's public fear-inducing chaos. This one applies well to both bisexuals and pansexuals. Freelancers. I think that's perfect. Double stick tape. Similarly, two-way streets. Now, I can't tell you why. It's like how yesterday my first thought for men loving men was boysenberries. My literal first thought for, for bisexuals was beanie babies. I don't know what world I'm living in, but suddenly LGBTQIA is just gonna be 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 Do beanie babies give off inherently bisexual energy? I think they do! A lot of you suggested that because we call lesbians sapphic, we call men who love men Achillean after the equivalent, like, genome of that whole name, history, history, history. So for bisexuals, what if we sandwich those terms together and get sophilian or akithic? What if if you're Sophilian, you have a preference towards female identifying people, and if you're a Kifik, you have a preference towards a Kifik? This is me asserting myself as thinking I'm one of the great bisexuals of our time. I'm bird girl, and I think bisexuals could all be bird girl, bird boy, or bird thems. Or, if you don't like any of those names, just call yourself my full name, Julie Violet Jester.
It'd be really confusing if I came out to my parents as Julie Viola Jester. They'd be like, dude, we know. Finishing up here, we could also call bisexuals our problematic faves, a literal raccoons. <laughs> Lavender folk, that is a serious... That is a serious submission. I do think calling bisexuals lavender folk would be really cute. And finally, we should just call bisexuals for what they really are, which is loud. Well, there you go. If you're bisexual and people are like, oh, no, that's not real. Just start throwing any of these random names at them. Because then they're not going to want to talk to you anymore. And then you can be bisexual in peace, I guess. Because the thing is, like, once you know, you just look back at your life and you're like, how, how did I not know? How did I not know? Because in hindsight, things always seem way more obvious. And trust me, you don't want to go down the path of, oh my god, what if I would have known earlier? Because you can't go back and change it. And, like, it's kind of natural to kind of mourn what could have been but still kind of just dwelling on that, not productive, not healthy, don't do it. Just don't, trust me, it's not gonna feel good. But yeah, like most non-binary people, or like most trans people in general, like if you use the wrong pronouns for them, and that correct you, don't make a big deal out of it, because it's okay if you don't know, it's okay if you get it wrong, just like apologize, move on, really. So... Yeah, it's okay if you didn't know. <laughs> no offense, but you're wrong. I don't think that we should be telling people what they can and cannot wear based on the size or shape or body that they were born in. For example, these boxers fit me perfectly. Also, these boxers fit me perfectly. This style fits me perfectly. Even this style fits me perfectly. Yeah. Why do we care what other people wear? Like, in general, but specifically like their underwear. Why do you care? I mean, literally, you're not gonna see it. At all, really. Um, unless they do show you like this, or you happen to go to the same gym and you see them changing or something. But guess what? You're not gonna see people's underwear. Literally anywhere, really. So why do you care? It's the same as caring about people's genitals. Like, why do you care? Like, what? What? Why would you want to know what other people have in their pants? It literally doesn't matter. It literally doesn't matter. What are you doing? What are you doing? I mean, apart from the obvious that it's just rude to try to tell other people how to live their lives, it's also just weird that you care. <laughs> Your elemental power is green. What's that? Green. Okay, so uh, just to recap. Fire, ice, water, earth, lightning, and green. Green. It's been a journey, but you got to green. And personally, I think green is a very soothing and very calm color. So, congratulations. You arrived at your true power. I... I... I guess, I, I, I don't know, probably. Like, honestly, it's great. It's a great feeling to be sure of your orientation, you know? So, congratulations. <laughs> I mean, those are good alternatives to saying my son or my daughter, you know? Just say my child, or my kid, or offspring, is something a lot of parents apparently use now for non-binary people. But still, um, just saying child or the name would be fine. But these are still funnier, you know? <laughs> no, but like, honestly? Even if saying child or the name is fine, like, if you don't have a close relationship with your parents, them going the extra mile of coming up with funny ways to say it just shows that uh, that they're supportive, you know? Because, like, if you're not close... When I came out as trans, my mother started kind of just saying child. 
Um, but that's because she was just hella confused and was honestly hoping it was a face, really. So, I love it when parents go the extra mile. Gender <laughs> is given by God. God? What is my gender? Wet spaghetti. What? I have nothing to say to this. I have nothing to say to this, because... Why do you think you speak for God, you know? Why? <laughs> I'm embarrassed. For the longest time, I would see this word, and I would pronounce it, Arawache. One more time. Arawache. Welcome to our circle of friends. What are you? I'm straight. What are you? I'm queer as fuck. What are you? I am gay. Very gay. And you? I'm a lesbian. And what about you? I'm, I'm, come on, friend. This is an accepting space. I'm, I'm, we all love you, friend. I'm, I'm, Arawache. 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 I am Arawache. I knew it wasn't pronounced like that, but that was what I thought. Today, I learned differently. It is not Arawache. It's Aro Ace. Fuck. <laughs> okay, but this is one of the things. It's just way more fun to say Arawache than Aro Ace. Like, Aro Ace, especially for Aro Ace people who are good at archery, is appropriate, right? Because then they're an Aro Ace, Aro Ace. But, Arawache just, it's so much more fun to say. So honestly, can we just change it? Because, because why not? I really wish this wasn't the case. Like, I really wish people didn't look at other people and were like, well, you're attracted to a different gender than I think you should be, so I think you deserve to die. Like, I wish that wasn't a thing. I wish it wasn't a thing that you just looked at another person and were like, you know what, no, I think the way you love is wrong, so I'm just gonna hate you. How, how... How do you think that that is an appropriate response, really? So I really wish this wasn't a thing. But I know that especially a lot of Muslim queers get a lot of hate for it. Because, oh, how can you still be Muslim if... Whatever. Listen. You can pick your own religion. And if you decide that you can't follow a certain religion anymore because it's very against who you are as a queer person, that is fine. If you choose to interpret it in a way that isn't hating on yourself and choose to still practice that religion or believe in it, that's also cool. But saying people choose to be queer, especially in countries or places they're faced with even more hate or death threats, is incredibly dumb. You know, maybe instead of focusing on stupid stuff like that, maybe focus on saving people's lives and not spreading hate. You know, I think that would be a good idea for once. What I mean when I say I'm a queer inclusive parent versus what conservatives on this app seem to hear. Mommy, are only girls able to have babies? Uh, it's more about what body parts you have than who you are. It's usually women, but it doesn't have to be. Okay, stop right there, you transphobic little shit, and please call me birthing person. What does having sex mean? Having sex is something that people might choose to do together when they're grown-ups because that's when their bodies are ready for it, to make a baby or to have fun. Oh, I've been dying for you to ask me this. Okay, first thing I want to talk to you about is anal sex. At school, Jessica said that I'm a boy because I don't like girl things. Okay, well, first of all, there aren't boy things and girl things. There are just things. And second of all, you can like whatever you like and you can be whoever you want to be. But what you like doesn't dictate who you are. Maybe Jessica's right. I mean, it'd be pretty cool if you were a trans guy. Do you want to be, do you want to be trans? I think you should be trans. I have a crush on someone. Oh, who do you have a crush on? Please be a gay crush. Please be a gay crush. Please be a gay crush. You went to Indigo? Can we read a new book? Absolutely, let's read it right now. Yes, I actually just picked up a book about how to be gay. I'll be right back. Yeah. People like misunderstanding 
what you say to fit their own agenda. You know, that's just that's just true. And I like that you made fun of it. Because literally telling your child that being who they are is okay and just that there are different ways people are is a good idea. But you immediately think that we're trying to groom them into being queer. Listen, we don't give a shit if our kid is queer or if the people we meet are queer or not. What we care about is that they're not a dipshit to other people or discriminate against other people. You know, that's generally what we care about. So teaching your kid that it's okay if they are queer, but it doesn't matter if they are or if they're straight, it really doesn't matter, is somehow a, a bad thing, according to these conservatives. And I don't get it. <laughs> Buckethead is a new one. If you wear a bucket hat, I'm just gonna assume you're a K-pop stan, really. But to be fair, a lot of K-pop stans are kind of queer. So it might be fair. Oh well. But Dot Martens, definitely. Definitely. Um, <laughs> I don't even know if I know that song. But Split Thy Hair generally also also yes and the whole i like your style or i like your outfit has generally also just become very queer coded right member of the lgbtq community <laughs> yes i in fact am i am i am yes absolutely slay who's a celebrity that you were surprised to find out actually is straight natasha leone oh natasha leone natasha leone and james corden Natasha Leone. Why is everybody saying Natasha Leone? I honestly still don't believe it. I really, I still don't get it. Because it's more shocking to find out she's married to Fred Armisen. Uh, Fred Armisen, are you kidding me? Fred Armisen? Wow, that hurts. Not to dull the moon, but it's tragic. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, James Corden? Yeah, he's straight. He's like married with a wife. Fred Armisen, if you're watching this, we're coming for you. Okay, saying that Hashel Yon is just fair. I'm not surprised people say her name because, say, when I found out she was trying, I was like, wait, what? Like, usually I'm not that surprised when I find out people's sexualities because what do I care, really? Um, but in her case, I was actually like, wait, what? That doesn't, that doesn't make sense. Like, with some people, it just doesn't make sense, you know? So, really? Oh, well. But James Corden? Why don't we want him? I mean, as a lesbian, you probably don't care, you know? But what? I wasn't actually aware he's straight either, really. <laughs> That's news to me. But you don't look gay. Oh, I'm sorry. Hold on, let me just... Again, yeah, but I also kind of love the whole having long nails except for like on two fingers, which just reads as very lesbian. Because then all the straight guys like, were like, oh, it'd be so pretty if those two weren't broken. Sure. Because that's queer coding as fuck. Because if you're femme and you like having long nails, that's fine. But then if you still want to sh very clearly show you're queer, Having two short nails, or just honestly, a vest. What straight woman ve wears a vest? Really, my god. <laughs> Okay. 
Okay, I'm not even bisexual, and I'm type three and four. I do awkward peace signs, and I generally don't sit normally. And I'm not even bi. Oh well, a lot of things that are bi stereotypes are just just generally queer stereotypes. <laughs> queer things I did before I knew I was queer. Part two. As it turns out, straight people don't Google "am I gay" quizzes multiple times throughout their youth. Maybe once, sure, we'll give them a pass. But like, multiple times. Do I like girls? Do I like my best friend as more than a friend? Am I attracted to my best friend? Am I bi? This is just not part of a straight person's day. So if this is part of your digital history, happy pride, my friend. We've been over this. If straight people like do these quizzes once like during a sleepover because they think it's hilarious F whatever whatever or if they're just like really bored fine but if you do it multiple times because you want to know it already shows me that you're not straight because you know you're not straight maybe you're not ready to admit it yet but Chances are if you're googling quizzes like these, or constantly wondering if you are attracted to your best friend or not. It's not giving straight vibes, my friend. <laughs> hey, we got the accent challenge, shout out with me, dirty pump on the thing. I number one, we got bean. Number two, we got eat. Number three, we got eat. Number four, we got beat. Number five, we got mm. I like the last one. Airflow is good. It's comfortable to sit like this. You know, you just sprawl out. Like, your legs are just sprawled out. But to be fair, do we really need chairs or do we just sit on the floor? Because I unironically kind of like sitting on the floor. <laughs> when I come out, we didn't have the word gay. The word for us is temperamental. So we're temperamental, we're that way. This is about all they had for us. This is about all we had for ourselves. We didn't call it. We did it. It's what you call now in the life, but then you just sweethearts. Well, there's no particular name. You know you like the woman, and you just like the woman. Thank you. I included this just to be wholesome, really. Because if you eradicate the words or if the words just don't exist yet and you just eradicate any mention of people who are like you you're not gonna eradicate the queer people themselves because guess what people still be queer even if you deny them knowledge or language for it which is why it's also so ridiculous to me when people are like oh oh we didn't have all this gender fluid or bisexual stuff when we were young you didn't have the words for it, sure, and you would literally queer bash anyone who showed signs that they were different, really. But that doesn't mean queer people don't exist, just because you hate on them or deny them things. You know? And honestly, I, I really love seeing old queer people. I love seeing them, but it always makes me sad because I know we could see so many more old queer people if queer people had a better life expectancy or if we didn't hate on them and they were just out publicly and didn't just have to hide who they are all their life. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's not really a reason to join the gym. And to be fair, I don't think you're gonna find people who do this at the gym regularly, because people don't do this at the gym. But if you want to go to the gym so you can be strong and pick up your girlfriend, or have better endurance for fun times with your girlfriend, that might be an appropriate reason, actually. <laughs> 
Haircut trends for 2023, queer edition. I am qualified to make this video because I am a queer Atlanta-based hairstylist. Starting off strong, we've got the bowl cut. What is sassier and gayer than the fucking bowl cut? The evolution of the bowl cut from the 90s to now is exquisite. And it can be worn on any hair type. So get yourself a bowl cut in 2023. I am not growing my hair out. I am definitely not growing out my hair out. I definitely will at some point. But I literally just cut it off like two months ago. Two? Two and a half? I'm not sure. But I just cut it off. We're not growing a hair out just to get a bowl cut. No. But if you do want a new haircut, there you go. Maybe a bowl cut is what you want to go for. I don't know. Whoa. <laughs> Rock on, freaky bro. Yeah. It's kind of sweet. It's like, I don't get you, but you're my grandkid and I love you. That's just funny. That is literally just funny to me. <laughs> Again, this is one of the things that really does not give straight vibes. If you wonder if you're attracted to your best friends, or if you say, oh no, women are just so much prettier. M my friend, my friend, if you were a straight woman, you could admit that women are pretty, of course, but you're not gonna stand there and be like, no, women just objectively are more beautiful. Because you're just gonna be attracted to men. You know, so stop being a clown because lying to yourself is not gonna it's not gonna work. You know, it's gonna it's gonna come back to bite you eventually. <laughs> so that was all the check talks out for today. I hope you had fun. I hope if you're aromatic you feel called out because I still feel called out from like the second video. Um but you know, that's okay. That's okay. I'm kind of getting used to calling myself out with these videos, you know. So, I'll be at fun. I hope you're hydrated. If you got a drink and let it stand there right next to you and ignored it until now, go drink it now. I get it. The same thing happens to me constantly. But anyways, get hydrated. And I'll be back in three days with my next video.